Are you visiting the Queensland capital and looking for ways in getting around Brisbane without a car? Then you've come to the right place. Today, I'll be going through several different modes of transport to get you to and from any location in Brisbane. Not only that, but giving you a brief outlook on some of the costs, ease and frequency of the public transport along with how to book and travel. This includes your train rides, ferry transfers, bus service, and the e-bike neuron scooters, some free services, and of course the Uber and black and white or yellow taxis. Today, we're heading in and around Brisbane City all on public transport, just to show you how easy it is to get around and visit everything you want to see. This could be as a long-term local or a short-term tourist. If you are a tourist, you'll soon find out that the main sites to see in Brisbane are contained within South Brisbane, South Bank Parklands, Kangaroo Point, and Brisbane City itself. Obviously, walking around these areas are also an option, but public transport can make it easier, and I'm here today to show you how. So let's get to it. The most popular modes of public transport getting around Brisbane will be through the TransLink network. This includes the trains, buses, and ferry services that can take you from one side of Brisbane to the other, as well as limited areas to the Gold Coast in the south and Sunshine Coast in the north. The buses will get you to most suburbs of Brisbane and less high profile areas. Trains will take you to about six different lines from one end of Brisbane to the other, including the domestic and international airports. The ferry network runs along the Brisbane River from Hamilton in the north side to St Lucia in the south. All of these services are more common and a lot more frequent in the inner city and south Brisbane areas, but all can be used on the convenient Go Card, purchased from TransLink. You can purchase a single way paper ticket for every journey, but these can get more expensive and less convenient to purchase. Go cards can be purchased from any TransLink supplier, like the train station, along with 7-Eleven stores, news agencies, or vending machines around Brisbane, as well as posted to your home by ordering online. Purchasing a Go card would unlock at least 30% savings on a single paper ticket, plus more convenient to tap on and off for every journey that you travel. The cards have a refundable deposit of $10 for an adult and a minimum starting balance of $5. You can top up the card at any time for any amount that you choose. In any of the same locations, you can buy the cards or set up an automatic top up with the credit card online. In fact, registering your card online will help protect your balance and if the card is lost or stolen. If you're trying to plan out your journeys, this can be done through the TransLink app. This uses all networks from point A to point B, cost, walking distance, platforms, times, and the service numbers. This is your go-to app for any public transport around Brisbane, but you will need data or Wi-Fi to access it. Now the Go CQ card is TransLink's electronic travel card and sometimes a more convenient way for tourists to use in the South East Queensland network. This means you'll be able to use the same bus, ferry and train network just like the Go card. This includes exploring the regions in Brisbane, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast, Ipswich, Logan and Moreton Bay but instead you will pay for either three or five days of unlimited journeys on the network. So if you intend to use the public system a lot or travel longer distances, this could end up being a cheaper option for you. An adult three-day pass will cost $79 and a five-day is $129. And concessions will apply for children up to the age of 14. Like the go-card, you will be tapping on and off for every journey travelled. The fare price depends on the zones you are travelling to. A single zone starts with an adult price of $3.37 and up to $20.34 for eight zones. Most of the Brisbane city region will be contained within one zone, so you will be charged the minimum for each trip you take. 
This means three different trips or services within Zone 1 of Brisbane City will cost you $10.11. Therefore, plan out your journeys based on what you want to see in the most cost-effective way. Failure to tap off your go-kart at the end of the journey will result in a fixed amount deducted from your balance. This ranges from $5 to $10 depending on the service, which is normally more costly than the correct fare, so don't forget to tap off. Catching a bus will require you to flag down the driver and stop the bus unless you're in a popular common stop. This is also the same for getting off the bus by pressing the button and signalling the driver to stop at the next location. If you're new to Brisbane and not sure when your stop is actually coming up, just tell the driver as you enter the bus where you want to go and they should let you know. The trains I do find a little easier to travel and fixed within Brisbane suburbs as station stops. You will normally tap on and off upon entering the station in the suburb and allowing access through the automatic gates in the inner city locations. As long as you know the suburb you're going to, the speaker system will tell you when that station is coming up and prepare you to depart. Your carriage door will only open if you activate it by pressing the button, but don't confuse this with the emergency button, which is often nearby. The Brisbane Air Train doesn't follow the zone pricing regime like the rest of Brisbane, but you can still tap on and off with your go card to pay for it. The cost will depend of where you're coming from, but generally traveling from Brisbane Central Station to the airport with your go card will cost you $19.50 one way per person. If you're looking at saving two bucks, then you can go to airtrain.com.au and book your return ticket online, which will cost you $37. They run about every 30 minutes and are more frequent during busier times. So it's best to check the timetable online first to see whether it's going to be convenient for you. The ferry network circles around the inner city suburbs within about 10 kilometers either side. This is a beautiful way to travel around, especially if you're new to the area. Getting from point A to point B is always handy, but the city views, especially at night, adds to the atmosphere and makes the journey more enjoyable. The tap on and off areas are randomly around the inside of the city cat, so look out for them. So how about some free transport? Then you have the Brisbane City Hopper. These boats are smaller than the normal city cat. They're actually called kitty cats, but have a small red sign on them named City Hopper. The Brisbane City Council City Hopper is a free inner city ferry service on the Brisbane River. You can hop on and off the City Hopper between North Quay and New Farm for free. The service runs seven days a week and comes through every 30 minutes. Times may vary on the day, but generally between 5.30 a.m. and midnight with later services on Friday and Saturday nights. Some more free services, then don't forget the free bus loop, which has a couple of different tracks, but they do work the same as any bus in Brisbane. They need to be flagged down to get on and you need to hit the stop button to get off at the next stop. These buses have a convenient board on the inside with the stops coming up, which helps you not to miss it. There are two taxi or cab companies in Brisbane. These are the black and white cabs and yellow cabs. In Brisbane City, you will find several allocated taxi ranks where you can jump in and ride to wherever you're going. Other than that, you can call the hotline for either one and give them a specific address. Alternatively, you can hire them both from a phone app, but I have heard that this is more reliable for ad-lib random trips than for booking at a certain time. Prices can vary depending on the day and dearer during busier times like a Friday and a Saturday night. I would only use this option after exhausting all modes of public transport as I do find the prices are a little excessive. 
Ubers are gaining more and more popularity over the years and you can find plenty of Ubers waiting around wherever you are in Brisbane. These are booked through the app on your phone and based on your phone's GPS location. Prices for Ubers are a little bit more affordable, but once again, I would only use them out of convenience and once exhausting all other public transport options. Now adding something a little different today, we have the Neuron Scooters, which have been in Brisbane for quite a few years, but this is my first time trying to use it. It's more of a fun way to get around on the footpaths of Brisbane, but will reduce the time instead of walking. After researching the details online, I was directed to download the app onto my phone. Once a phone number and email address have been verified, you can select the payment option with a credit card or PayPal and you're ready to go. If you have a couple of people, then it is handy to know that the Neuron Scooters account you just set up can activate up to five vehicles and charge to the same account. These scooters are available in several different cities around Australia, so if you happen to be visiting any of these cities, they can be managed through the One app. Passes and payments can be made through the app for one day for $15, three days for $25, a weekly for $33 and monthly arrangements for $99. This gets cheaper with the longer pass you get, but based on a $1 unlock fee, as many rides as you want and up to 90 minutes ride time per day of use. If you're looking to try them out and more of a short-term option, you can pay per ride for $1 unlock fee for each scooter and 45 cents per minute that you ride. The Neuron Network or parking stations are all throughout Brisbane City, but stretch as far as Hamilton in the north side of town and Indrapilly on the south side. This app will show you where you can go, where to park, where not to park, where you can hire a vehicle and how many of them are there. The coloured zones will detail no ride zones and where you need to lower your speed to a maximum of 15 kilometres per hour. What's great about these scooters is that you can get from point A to point B throughout the network in a quick amount of time. When you finish up, you simply check out and move on to whatever else you want to do. Well now you know how to get around Brisbane, so next you need to check out some of the things to do. So click here for my South East Queensland playlist and start planning out what you're going to check out in Brisbane.